Good morning and welcome to St Martin's on this the seventh Sunday of, after Easter when we celebrate the Ascension of Christ. I hope you've got our order of service, those are available online or by email or can be posted out if you would like one and you're not on our distribution list please do just let us know and we can send those out to you. Through the service I'm going to be suggesting that you might like to stand or sit for different parts of the service but of course as you feel able and as you are most comfortable please don't feel that I can make you stand and so for, uh, for your, the different parts of the service just uh, ad adopt a posture that is most comfortable and fitting for you. We meet in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we celebrate this day of our journey together, may the Lord be with you. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. And we'll stand, if you'd like to, to sing our first hymn, which is Jesus shall reign where'er the sun does its successive journeys run. secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. God our Father we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please stand if you're able as we come to sing the Gloria. We join with the angels, our voices we raise to give you the glory and sing forth your praise. We pray for the peace you alone can bestow to fall down like rain on your people below. O Lord God Almighty and Heavenly King, accept the thanksgivings and praises we bring. For though you are mighty, the Lord God above, for us you are also the Father we love. Christ Jesus, Messiah, and God's only Son, the Lamb who was slain, who now sits on heaven's throne. Your death conquered evil and cancelled our sin. In mercy receive all the prayers that we bring. All glory to God in the highest of heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be to you and you only, your praises we sing, O Lord God and Father, our Heavenly King. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. If you'd like to take a seat to hear our first reading. A reading from the Book of Acts, chapter 1 starting at the first verse. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms might be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak through me and set our hearts on fire with the desire to do your will. Amen. My last home before coming to live in Hereford was in what had been a miller's cottage, perched high on a hill and surrounded by olive groves. Each ascension day the church would gather among the olive grove trees for an early morning communion service and then retire to my garden for a full English breakfast. We were all British expats, so no surprise there. It was so good to be able to worship in the open air, and we were always fortunate in having sunny weather. Worshipping in that olive grove, high on a hill, was, I think, as close to Bethany as you could imagine. The ascension of our Lord used to be celebrated quite dramatically in some places. In medieval times, some churches had a special hole in the roof that was used on Ascension Day. And when the words from the Gospel were read, while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. The likeness of the risen Lord would be hauled up from the floor and out of sight of the people worshipping below. I expect the children especially enjoyed that spectacle. The same hole was used on the day of Pentecost when roses were showered down from above to symbolise the tongues of fire that rested on the disciples that first Pentecost. Today, some churches move the Paschal candle to the font, extinguishing it at the same gospel signal. He parted from them and was carried into heaven. Few of us would suggest a revival of the medieval practice of lifting a statue of our Lord up through the roof. Health and safety would be upon us like a ton of bricks, and I think the last thing any PCC wants is a hole in the roof. Now, of course, non-believers might question Luke's version of the ascension. Do you mean to say that Jesus took off vertically, like a helicopter, while the disciples stood there, gazing up to the sky, mouths agape in astonishment. It is an account that's hard to defend, but that's the way Luke tells the story, not once, but twice. First in his Gospel, and then in the Book of Acts. Well, granted that God could lift up the Lord in such a manner, but we are still left with the question... Where did the Lord go when he disappeared from sight? To heaven? But just where is heaven located? Since Christians first began building churches, the risen Lord has been located, painted on the ceiling, usually seated on a throne, but sometimes floating around in the sky. And at Walsingham, and uh, I think in the Sistine Chapel, he's depicted with two feet just suspended underneath a cloud. I expect we've all seen these depictions in churches that we've visited. It's not really satisfying, and especially now in the 21st century, when uh, men have flown to, landed on and walked on the moon. 
Where did the Lord go? And how did he get there? Well, the best we can say is that he turned to the Father who sent him. And that he now reigns in glory until the appointed time for his return, the day the trumpet will sound to usher in the fullness of his kingdom. For us, the ascension of the Lord means that the resurrection of Christ is now complete. His God-given mission, which ended so suddenly and, in the eyes of the world, in total failure, now ends in triumph. Jesus had to return to the Father because he couldn't go on century after century manifesting his resurrected being to doubters and believers alike. That would have placed belief in Jesus in the realms of sight rather than of faith, which is where it belongs. The women and the disciples had to take the resurrection in faith. No one actually saw Christ rise from the dead and leave the tomb that first Easter morning. The resurrected Jesus appeared to them because it was necessary that he should be seen and recognised by those who knew and loved him. They saw him die on the cross. They saw him as he appeared to them after he broke free from the grave. And in faith, we celebrate what the disciples saw as the Lord departed from them and this earth. What it means for us is more important than how it was accomplished, or precisely where Christ went to be with God the Father in heaven. Luke's version of the Ascension contains Jesus' last farewell speech to his disciples and to the world. He himself tells us that God has turned the tragedy of the cross into a triumph over the tomb. Usually, someone has to speak for us after our death. But Christ was able to speak for himself rather than needing someone to speak for him. is an actualisation of his victory over sin and death. No one had to make a case for Jesus' death and resurrection. He spoke for himself. Jesus said, it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from dead. He allowed himself to be destroyed by death on the cross so that the will of God for him and for humanity might be accomplished. As the Apostle Paul points out, he humbled himself. And not only because, in the eyes of the people looking for an all-conquering Messiah, a total failure, but God changed that tragedy into glorious triumph in his resurrection and ascension to his right hand on high, to reign with him in glory. In these days, before his ascension, Jesus had the opportunity to clarify once and for all the nature and scope of his mission on earth to the disciples. And the good news, which the world needs to know, is the story of Jesus' birth, death and resurrection and what the story means. It includes a call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness. And it's up to us to tell of the cross and the tomb, as well as the trumpet that is yet to sound. Jesus told his disciples, you are witnesses to these things. And they did become faithful witnesses, even to laying down their lives for the sake of Christ and the gospel. Jesus had prepared them for their work by opening their minds to understand the scriptures and told them to return to the city and wait until they were clothed with power from on high. Then they would be ready, be fully equipped to witness for Christ to the world. That's the way it was. And it still is. As Luke tells the story, the ascension took place 40 days after Easter Day. And the disciples now clearly understand what Jesus had been doing and achieving for God and humanity in the three years they'd spent with him. God had intended the story should come out in that way. And despite Jesus' departure from them, 
Their hearts were filled with joy, we're told, and they did as he commanded them. And they went back to the city to await the promise. They knew Jesus was the Son of God and the Saviour of the world, the long-promised Messiah. They knew they would see him again when he returned, and as he assured them, he would be at the end of time. They knew he still loved them, because as well as appearing to them after the resurrection, he had entrusted his mission on earth to them. The disciples now realised the nature of God's love and power, and so should we. And today, as the Paschal candle is moved to the font in some churches, we rejoice with the believers of all ages. The promise and the power have been passed on to us by the faithful of other times and places. We know the story. We believe that Christ is the risen, ascended Lord. And we should be convinced that it is now to, uh, to us to tell the story to all people, so that our joy might be theirs. Amen. If you're able, please stand to as we sing our creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty, by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to be. sit or kneel for our time of prayer. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Jesus Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Lord, we pray for our Archbishop, Justin Welby, and for our new diocesan bishop, Richard Jackson. Be with all who lead our churches locally, 
that they may have wisdom and insight in making decisions about how to develop new and safe ways to worship you and of being your church together, serving one another and our communities in your name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Help us, Lord, not to want to rush back to the way things were before lockdown. But help us to be ready to move forward, to develop new and better ways of living our lives. Help us to learn the lessons that you are teaching us through this time of suffering. We are so sorry for the times we have turned our backs on you. Forgive us for our selfishness and greed. Help us to discover new and more honourable ways to conduct business, to cut out non-essential travel and all that damages the environment. We pray for the people of the Sub-Saharan Africa whose crops have been decimated by swarms of locusts. We pray that relief aid will soon reach them and those in refugee camps around the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress and sorrow. We pray especially today for those known to us who are unwell or have asked for our prayers. Glennis H, Graham M, Gaynor C, Pat A, Margaret M, Anne W, Marcia R, Oliver, JDW, Chrissy, Hannah, Linda, Margaret D, Joe D, Nick D, Brenda B, Imi B, Harry, Lee, Roger, Seren W, Dot G, and Emma. Lord Jesus, be near to all who are unwell, lonely, anxious and fearful at this time. Touch them with your healing love and power. When so many around the world are suffering from coronavirus and many other forms of illness, come Lord and breathe your holy and life-giving spirit into them and make them new. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround with your saints and angels, those who have died trusting in your promises. We remember especially today, those who have recently died and for all who mourn the loss of loved ones at this time. Eileen E, Judith B, Sheila S, Graham J, Brenda M, Florence, John V, Ellie May, Peggy H, Robert H, Peter H, and Carl P. Lord Jesus, we pray for these loved ones and for the many thousands who have died worldwide from COVID-19 in recent months. May the departed rest in your eternal peace and may those who mourn know your comfort, strength and protection at this time of sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, 
Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, we pray for Christians who are persecuted for their faith. Please protect them and give them courage. Thank you for the freedom we have in the West to practice our faith. Help us to identify the gifts you have given us and help us to use them in your service. Help us not to waste the opportunities you give us, that in both our words and our actions we may bring honour to your name and draw many to find faith in you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Please stand as we come to share the peace. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we offer one another a sign of peace. If you are gathered with family, then we offer a sign of peace. And if you are alone at home, peace be with you. Lord, you give your people bread from heaven. Bless our offerings that we may come to feast at your heavenly table, where the hungry are fed and the humble are lifted up. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy. It is always right to give you thanks, God, our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. Holy, holy, holy. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus, our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. Holy, holy, holy. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity.
Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Amen. 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 Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen. 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 For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us, that we may live in you. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia, that the Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Alleluia. Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This 
reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. They were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The Lord be with you. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Before our final hymn, if I could just indulge me for a moment as I, we don't usually do notices in these um, recorded services, but if you have any comments, any suggestions about our services, about what we're offering, what else we could offer, I'd be very grateful if we could hear them. If the format doesn't suit you, if there are suggestions about things we could improve, please do let us know. Being the church when we don't see one another is difficult, but it matters that we're able to offer what you need. And so please do let us know if there's anything that you would like us to do differently or you would like us to add to what we're offering already. Our final hymn is Rejoice, the Lord is King. <laughs> 